Welcome to Hanson Legacy Farm. I thought I'd come out this morning and check on the chickens. And I have somebody in there trying to lay an egg this morning. So I think I'm going to leave her alone and I'll come out. I know there's probably a couple eggs in there. I'll leave her alone and I'll come out in just a bit and uh, gather the eggs once she's come off the nest. She won't peck me, but I don't want to disturb her. Let her do her thing and there say hey. Good morning. I came out to feed them, but I thought I'd check for eggs first real quick. I'm going to feed the chickens and then I'm going to get out there and plant the uh, broccoli in the bed. Darren bought some uh, broccoli plants and so uh, I'm going to get those in the bed because they need to be planted. I've been holding off trying to keep them in the shade because it's been a little bit warm. And also, too, I don't want the deer to eat them. And we have the uh, infestation of the aphids and the mealybugs. I think I've got that taken care of, and I needed to find my netting because I'm going to cover those up. And uh, hopefully, when it gets a little cooler outside, I'm going to put some lettuce around the broccoli and have just a green veggie bed, I guess you might say. I don't know what they're doing in there. Anyways, I'm going to get that done, take care of the chickens, and then we're going to get over there and plant the broccoli we in the bed. We put the mushroom compost around this, and I think that's made a huge difference in these beds because look at this right here. My, um, I forgot what this is called now, but I broke a limb off, and I stuck it in, popped it in the ground beside it, and it propagated and just started blooming and growing growing well. I'll definitely be using the mushroom compost for my garden beds in the future because it's working really well for my garden. Definitely a compost, mushroom compost is what I'm going to be using in the future. And we've been hiding our broccoli plants amongst the uh, marigold and the tomato plants. So I'm going to go ahead and get these out. Trying to keep the keep the cabbage moths or the I guess it would be the same thing that we get on a broccoli plant off of my broccolis. Didn't realize we had this many. There's still two more. Let's take them over to the bed where I can get the bed all cleaned out and leveled and get them planted. to rake the soil to where it's a little bit more evenly across the bed and I'm gonna put some biotone fertilizer in this bed and then I'm gonna get my plants in the ground. Got just a little bit of worm casting left. I don't know if I'll have enough to put any toll with the broccoli. I have a couple of cauliflower and I have never been able to grow cauliflower before. So this is an experiment for me to see if I can grow it and get a couple of heads of cauliflower. I think I only have two cauliflower plants, but we do have some that Darren uh, seeded out and they're in the garage right now. That flat of seed starts was knocked off on the back porch. I left it there overnight and I came out the next morning and it was just tumped over on the porch. And so I tried to save as many or all the plants that I could and laid them back in the flat and watered them. Darren worked the other night to get the plants potted into um, different containers separate by themselves. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if we get any broccoli from those plants but because they're actually kind of small and they're not as large as the ones that I'm going to be putting in the bed today but I do have some netting that I'm going to put across this bed but I've got to go get the hoops and put those on the bed before I get started so um or before I put the netting over the broccoli and the cauliflower we want to keep those moths off of them because that's where your eggs come from the larvae and the the worms that eat your broccoli and your cauliflower and your cabbages 
So we're gonna do that. So let me go grab my plants and we'll get started. Got the plants laid out three cauliflower and four broccoli so i've got them laid out like in a window pattern and kind of away from the sides and the ends so that i could get my fabric around them and typically you do not use tomato cages to stake your broccoli plants but i have some feral cats and i know as soon as i put that fabric on top of these broccoli and cauliflowers they're going to think it's a tent for them and they're going to dive on it and probably sink it in so I'm hoping by putting the hoops on there and the tomato cage I, I can eliminate some obstruction of my plants hopefully we'll see
Well, as you can see, it's a new day, but I wanted to bring you guys along with me as I came out and checked on the broccoli and cauliflower bed this morning. The netting is still there. It's still standing. So as always, I want to thank you for joining us here at Hanson Legacy Farm, and I pray you'll come back and join us in the next video. God bless everybody.